Hey everybody, it's Matt with House of Vacuums, and uh, today we've got our promised Shark Stratos Care and Maintenance Guide. So if you own a Shark Stratos, these are the steps that you're going to want to take as an owner to both maintain your machine and also diagnose issues that you may come across during the ownership experience. So let's take a look. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to first separate all of this just so that we can deal with each piece individually. So first, let's take a look at the nozzle. So this does have the odor neutralizer. Now, if you twist this, um, it comes out right here. So this is a replaceable part, uh, which is kind of ironic for a company that's like decried bags. You know, you have to replace stuff. We have bagless. Well, you got to replace this. Um, so this is something that needs replaced every six months at minimum every three months but if you have a fluffy haired or shedding pet at least monthly you're going to want to take this and remove it using this little button right here so you just pull up on that and this removes your fluffy brush now this is washable so you can go ahead and just wash this off with ditch, dish detergent in the sink let it dry for at least 24 hours and then you can uh, put it back on the machine you're also gonna to wanna to look down in here to make sure that there is none of the uh, hair that accumulates typically with the Duo Clean system. It'll happen right underneath this comb assembly right here. So just keep an eye on that. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to double check the brush roll for hair wrapping. Now, it shouldn't be a lot because again, especially as these are new, um, they do a fairly effective job of keeping hair off the brush roll. But as I've said in previous videos, I've shown you where the vertex, the plastic starts to split on the fin. So what you'll start to see is you'll start to see little nicks in the fin right here and as those accumulate you're going to start to get hair wrapping in the areas where the fin is no longer effective so you will eventually need to start removing some hair from this as the vacuum ages and as this wears the next thing you're going to want to do is if you have a clog you can check right here you can get all the way up as you can see my finger right there Let's see if you can see that yeah um and then, uh, so make sure that this is clear, and then you should be able to see daylight up through here, and you can probably see my finger wiggling around in there. So that is your first length of hose. So if you ha suspect you have a clog, that is one of the first places to look. So those are the things that you have to do to the nozzle. You have to keep an eye on replacing this guy every six months if you want the odor ne neutralizer to be working. You want to double check this every three months if you don't have pets, monthly if you do have pets. And then to put this back in, you just slot it in right there and he clicks into the side automatically. You want to check this for hair. You can check this length for clogs. And then on top here, you can go ahead and just pop this in. Now, one of the questions that I've gotten regarding the Vertex um, that also applies to this is I've had people ask whether or not when things get caught up in here between this, um, between this like plastic frame, frame piece and the clear housing, there's a gap right there and that will accumulate dirt and fuzz and gunk. Um, they've asked whether or not you can get in there and clean that, and the unfortunate truth of the matter is no, you can't. Um, you can't get into that without completely disassembling the nozzle, which we'll get into in a different video, but without completely disassembling the nozzle, you cannot get in there and clean that out, so it's just going to accumulate junk and you're just going to have to look at it. Next, while we're talking about clogs, we'll talk about the next length of air pathway heading up to the machine. So if you suspect that you have a clog, if the vacuum is sounding like it's struggling, um, if you check the filter and there's still no suction, um, and we'll tell you how to check the filter in just a moment, but if there's still no suction, you feel like there's, it's not cleaning like it used to, or maybe it's spitting stuff out, you'll wanna double check this for clogs. But you can see here, You'll be able to see down and through. You can also shine a flashlight if you're unsure, and you should be able to see light coming through there. If you can't see light, then it's clogged. So you can check the wand. That is the next length from the nozzle. So it goes nozzle, 
wand, then your hose. So apologies for cutting in here, but the audio in this portion was completely unusable, full of crackles. So I'll just explain what's going on here. This hose has angles on both ends, so it's extremely difficult to unclog yourself. You can shine a light down it to see whether or not you can see light down through it, but that's not always a surefire bet. The other option is that you can get another vacuum and back suck the clog and make sure there's airflow through that hose. If there's not airflow, then the other vacuum should be able to dislodge that clog unless it's really tenacious. Now, I understand that most people don't have additional vacuums laying around. So the other option is to fashion a coat hanger into a hook, a metal coat hanger into a hook, and to send it down there very carefully because this hose is made out of vinyl and you can poke a hole through that very, very easily. If you don't feel comfortable doing that and you do have a clog in that hose, you may want to take the hose into your local vacuum shop to have them take a look at it um, just to avoid damaging the hose or any of the parts. If you're finding this at all helpful or you just think that I'm a nice guy, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Uh, click that like button. Helps us out so, so much. I really appreciate it. Then next and finally, we're going to look at how to maintain your motor unit and dust bin. So to remove the dust bin, we just simply take this guy right here, this guy unhooks. So what we've got now is we've got the pre-motor filter. So we'll pull these out. These just pull out. There is one that is a thinner fiber filter that goes first, and then there is a foam filter. And these are um, pre-motor, so you want to keep these as clean as possible because if these start to load up and get dirty, um, then you run the risk, number one, of passing stuff down into the motor. If these get really loaded, you can get dust down into the motor. Second reason is this can really affect performance because these signal cyclones on sharks are not typically super efficient. So this is your last stop gap and it catches a lot of junk and it will uh, affect your performance. Now, according to Shark here, um, <laughs> according to shark and i'll show this you can see here so it says rinse filters every month to maintain suction power all right so so this is now gone from six months to three months, and now they're saying monthly. So originally, the shark said to do this every six months, and then their you know little bit later models said three months, and now they're telling you to do this monthly. You have to do this monthly, regardless of the situation. I've seen people who are you know in dusty areas like farms, ranches, places where there's construction, um, really dusty areas that probably should be washing this every two weeks. Um, so you just need to keep an eye on it when you dump the cup you're able to see it if you visibly see dirt loading on that filter not just discoloration but actually dirt that you can rub off on your fingers wash it um, so basically all you do and it tells you to rinse this with water it does not say to use soap because soap like if you use dish soap or hand soap, that can leave a residue which can affect performance. Now, what I like to do personally is I like to take these and I like to spray them down with a degreaser. Um, I use a uh, the purple degreaser from Sam's Club, Members Mark. Uh, it works really, really well. Um, if you wanna get something that's more easily obtainable, you can get Simple Green just about anywhere, but those kind of degreasers rinse clean. So you're able to get these, soap them up, just give them a little spray don't oversaturate them with soap but then get them under water work it out until there's no more suds left and then let these dry typically in the sun next to a dehumidifier maybe next to your dryer let these dry for a minimum of 24 hours um, even if they feel dry to the touch you don't want to use them before that so the next thing that you can do is check your um, is go ahead and check your HEPA filter. Now, this is something that I would probably do along with the uh, scent tablet. I would probably check this every six months. If you're doing a good job of keeping this filter clean, then there won't be as much dirt passing through the motor and into your HEPA filter, which is its final stop prior to heading back out into the room. 
you can also wash this. Um, again, I would recommend using a degreaser that does not leave a residue, just a couple, couple pumps, uh, you know, work it in a little bit by hand. You don't want to be too rough with these because they are a little bit more fragile. And you can go ahead and dry this again, minimum of 24 hours in a dry location, be that next to a dryer, dehumidifier, or outside in the sun. Um, to put this back in, this is directional. You've got a tab right here and then a release. The tab just pushes in right there and this clicks. So now that's in place. And now this goes in this clip right here and push. All right, finally, we've got our dust cup. So if we take these two tabs right here, show you those and pull up. Now we've got access to the top. What you want to do is the first thing that you want to do is you want to check your cylinder filter here and make sure that this is clear. Um, this will accumulate dust and debris. It's meant to be kind of a coarse filter layer prior to the foam motor filter. And if this starts to load up with stuff, you're going to notice a decrease in performance. And a lot of times people will clean that foam filter and think everything's hunky-dory, but they've still got gunk built up on this. Particularly, it, depending on the kind of dirt that you have in your area, that can start to accumulate. Like we have red clay here, and that does start to accumulate with time. If it's in a fairly dusty environment, it'll, it'll accumulate with this. So we want to make sure this is clean. Now, this is not removable, so you're going to have to get down in here with a wet rag or another vacuum and clean. Typically, if you're maintaining this on a regular basis, it will be sufficient for you to take a wet microfiber towel and just wipe this out. foam filters prior to the motor, cone filter, wipe down. What that's going to do is that's going to allow you to, um, what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to kind of keep this clean, keep odors from sticking around, and um, just kind of generally uh, keep your machine in tip top shape so that just gunk doesn't start to build up here in these little crevices, etc. Now, Now, the one thing that I will say about the Stratos is that it is much better in the sense that you can actually reach your hand down inside this cup. The apex and the vertex, you could not do that. Um, there was not enough room in there for you to physically get your hand in. So in any case, that is the main maintenance steps for both the filter maintenance, cup maintenance, brush maintenance, as well as clog troubleshooting on the shark stratos so hopefully that you find that helpful um, if you like this video just go ahead and give us a like that helps us out a ton and of course my name is matt and i will see you in the next video bye